Good morning. And today we celebrate the eighth Sunday in Ordinary Time. Under the leadership of the Capuchin Franciscan Friars and in union with the Roman Catholic Archdiocese of Philadelphia, St. John's welcomes all who are present with us today in praising God and serving God's people. The ever popular little Lenten black books are on sale in the back of the church and at the parish office. The black book contains short daily inspirational reflections for the season of Lent. The cost is $2. In this Eucharist, we remember especially the intentions of the celebrant. Our celebrant is Father John McCloskey. As we are about to begin the liturgy, please turn off or silence all paging devices, cell phones, or any other devices that may cause that may be a cause of disru disruption or distraction. Thank you. Our opening hymn is number 732, Alleluia, Sing to Jesus, 732. Please stand. Sunday. We are glad that we are all here together to worship the Lord, the Prince of Peace, in the midst of a troubled world. 
We also welcome those who are watching on our live stream. And uh, we make particular note that we have some secular Franciscans here this morning who are uh, going to be meeting afterwards. They're up in this area. And if anyone wants to talk about the uh, secular Franciscan order, ask any questions about it, uh, please uh, get in touch with one of them after Mass. As we prepare ourselves to worship this morning together, we begin, as always, acknowledging that we are sinners in need of the Lord's mercy. on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we us, O Lord, we pray, that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule, and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the husk appear. So do one's faults when one speaks. As the test of what the potter molds is in the furnace, so in tribulation is the test of the just. The fruit of a tree shows the care it, ha it has had. So too, does one's speech disclose the bent of one's mind? Praise no one before he speaks, for it is then that people are tested. The word of the Lord.
to give thanks to the Lord, to sing praise to your name most high, to proclaim your kindness at dawn, and your faithfulness throughout the Just one shall flourish like the palm tree, like a cedar of Lebanon shall he grow. They that are planted in the house of the Lord shall flourish in the courts of our God. shall bear fruit even in old age. Vigorous and sturdy shall they be, declaring how just is the Lord, my rock in whom there is no A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when this which is corruptible closes itself with incorruptibility, and this which is mortal clothes itself with immortality, then the word that is written shall come about. Death is swallowed up in victory. Where, O death, is your victory? Where, O oh death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brothers and sisters, be firm, steadfast, always fully devoted to the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind person guide a blind person? Will not both fall into a pit? No disciple is superior to his teacher, but when he is fully trained, every disciple will be like his teacher. Why do you notice the splinter in your brother's eye, but do not perceive the wooden beam in your own? How can you say to your brother, brother, let me remove that splinter in your eye, when you do not even notice the wooden beam in your own eye? You hypocrite. Remove the wooden beam from your eye first. Then you will see clearly to remove the splinter in your brother's eye. A good tree does not bear rotten fruit, nor does a rotten tree bear good fruit. For every tree is known by its own fruit. For people do not pick figs from thorn bushes, nor do they gather grapes from brambles. A good person, out of the store of goodness in his heart, produces good. But an evil person, out of the store of evil, produces evil. For from the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a lot that could be said about these readings today, of course. And I would draw your attention to the book of Ecclesiasticus or Sirach, depending upon whether you're using an older Catholic Bible or a more recent one. Uh, It is filled with good advice, and I'm not going to say anything about it. We can talk about war, suffering. The touchstones of true religion are mercy, the alleviation of suffering, certainly not causing suffering intentionally, justice, and peace. This week I shook my head in disbelief as some commentators, on the extreme to be sure, somehow are trying to make a claim that Russia was somehow on the side of Christianity in their war. That sort of analysis is hogwash. It upends traditional Christian understandings about how individuals and about how governments are meant in Christ to behave. In politics and in geopolitics, it seems, there are a lot of wooden beams in a lot of eyes. And the gospel requires that each of us strive to see as clearly as we can our own selves, our own positions, and to refrain from judging unnecessarily. But we do need to make some judgments. So having said all that, it may be helpful on this Sunday to review briefly the Catholic position on peace and the justified use of force in war. These principles apply to everybody. They apply to Russia, to the Ukraine, to the U.S., to everyone. And these principles that I'm enunciating are taken pretty directly from the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Strength and power, might, does not make a person or a government right. And being generally right and good does not mean individuals or governments are permitted to do bad things for good reasons. The ends do not justify the means. Many of the earliest Christians were largely pacifist, and there is much in the gospel to commend pacifism, but pacifism is a witness to evangelical charity, stands as a sign of contradiction to those who are violent, but pacifism is not required of Christians. In Catholic thought, peace is not simply the absence of war. And peace cannot be obtained unless the goods of persons and free communication among peoples and the respect for the dignity of individuals and people and the practice of the bonds of brotherhood are maintained. Those things are essential for peace. And all citizens and all governments are obliged to work to avoid war. 
leaders of governments and leaders of peoples are morally obligated to seek the common good and not self-interest. Legitimate governments have the right to self-defense once all efforts for peace have failed. And in order to defend by military force, the aggressor must have been threatening damage that's lasting, grave, and certain. It can't be simply an affront. It can't be simply uh, an insult. It has to be the aggressor is threatening damage that is lasting, grave, and certain. And all other means of putting an end to, it, to the aggression have to be, be either shown to be impractical or ineffective. That violence and war in defense even are last resorts. There has to be an effective or a serious prospect of success that countries cannot go to war for hopeless causes. And the use of arms cannot produce evils and disorders that are graver than the evil that is to be eliminated. That goes back to we cannot do good by evil means. Non-combatants, wounded soldiers, prisoners must be respected and treated humanely. Cities may never be targeted. Actions deliberately contrary to the law of nations and of the universal principles of justice are crimes. Blind obedience does not suffice to excuse those who carry out those crimes. And every act of war that is directed to indiscriminate destruction of whole cities or vast areas with their inhabitants, the Catechism says, is a crime against God and man. That's just a very basic summary of Catholic thought, Catholic theology on war, on when it is justified when it is not justified, and how to think about it. Let me switch gears. Let me switch gears and speak a little bit about what we've heard in the, in the readings, or at least to make an allusion to them. When these mass readings were decided and the lectionary of readings was published, the powers to that did this had to make some decisions about what to include and what to exclude. Sometimes the reading seemed to go on far too long. But to my way of thinking, I wish that they had gone just one verse longer in the gospel. Because the very next verse is, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I tell you? Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? On Wednesday, we begin Lent. May I suggest to you two ideas to guide your Lenten journey? First, all of us will be better persons if we spend more time reflecting on the beam in our own eye less focused on the splinters in the eyes of others. And second, all of us will be better if we spend time trying to answer the question, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and not do what I tell you? To make it very personal, why do you call Jesus Lord? And why do I not then do what he tells me fully and completely. We have three days to get ready for Lent. Now for some people that means trying to empty their house of candy. But I wouldn't worry about giving up candy specifically, unless you're truly addicted to it, in which case you should give it up anyway. It's okay if you're 10 years old to give up candy. 
But for adults fully committed to Christ, that trivializes Lent. It trivializes our journey to Christ. Fast seriously this Lent. Fast from food or drink, media, fast from trivialities, fast from unnecessary engagements and controversies. That kind of fast is much harder. And if you eat a candy bar, but you're fasting from creating a ruckus with people around you, if you're fasting seriously, giving up things that really matter, that's wonderful. Give generously. Give money generously. Consider tithing during Lent to whatever charity, to whatever cause, to whatever persons, to whatever at least during Lent, be generous and tithe. Pray diligently, not just quickly memorized prayers, but sitting with the Lord, sitting with the scriptures of the Lord, sitting with our own thoughts in front of God, holding up our thoughts to him and seeing where we are in relationship to him in relationship to his will for our lives. Fast seriously, give generously, pray diligently. If we do these things, when Easter comes, we may, by God's grace and our cooperation with God's grace, emerge as changed persons, more peaceful, more loving, less contentious, with quieter hearts, with more focused minds, with more self-insight, less judging, less angry. In a three-word phrase, this Lent, plan to be holy. Okay, four words. Plan to be holy. That's our Lenten journey. That idea of repentance for Lent isn't a matter of giving up small things. It's a matter of giving up anything that distracts us from Christ. Our Lenten journey of repentance doesn't simply mean repentance for sin. We should always have that. But that repentance, that idea is rooted in a change of direction, in a Greek word for change of direction as if you are moving about in a strange city and you're looking out at your phone and you need to figure out how to get from here to where you want to go. Where you want to go is holiness. And looking at what route we should take to get there. That's the journey of, of the Christian. And that's the journey particularly of Lent. profess the faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, 
and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. We know in faith that the Lord is attentive to our prayers, and so now we ask him on behalf of our brothers and sisters, ourselves, and upon all people. Respond. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and in all positions of leadership in the church, that they may inspire the faithful to see the dignity and integrity of every person. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the people of the Ukraine, suffering from the invasion of their country, that world leaders will be effective in their resolutions to bring this tragedy of war to an end. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For we who gather for prayer today, that we may be able to see our own faults and refrain from passing judgment on the failures of others. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who face unfair criticisms or disparagement, that they may be comforted. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For our beloved dead and all those who have died, may they experience our Father as a loving and merciful judge, welcoming them to everlasting life. In faith we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the intentions in our book of prayer and those that each of us offers now in silence. And for the intentions of the celebrant, remembered especially in this Eucharist, in faith we pray. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. Almighty Father, God of goodness and light and peace and justice, teach us your wisdom as you lead us on the path to holiness. We pray that you hear our prayers and all the prayers we leave unvoiced in our hearts. Through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 472, Holy Darkness, 472.
from our sight as we brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and good of all of his holy church. O God, who provides gifts to be offered to your name and counts our obligations, at, our oblations as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy that what you grant us as a source of merit may also help us to attain merit's reward through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With you. Lift up your hearts. Up your Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. It is truly right and just our, to give you thanks and to raise to you a hymn of glory and praise, O Lord, Father of infinite goodness. For by the word of your Son's gospel, you have brought together one church, from every people, tongue, and nation, and have filled her with life by the power of your spirit. You never cease through her to gather the whole family, human family into one. Manifesting the covenant of your love, she dispenses without ceasing the blessed hope of your kingdom and shines bright as the sign of your faithfulness, which in Christ Jesus, our Lord, you promised would last for eternity. And so with all the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, while with all the church as one voice we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the to be glorified, O God, who loves the human race and who always walks with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love, and when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again, until
Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, whom you led through, the pa- through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the spirit of your love we may be counted now and until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people together with Francis, our Pope, and Nelson, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit them to rejoice in the light of your face, and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with with the Blessed Apostles and Martyrs, with St. John the Evangelist, and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other a sign of peace.
Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Our communion hymn is number 329, Gift of Finest Wheat, 329.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we beseech your mercy, Lord, that by this same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may make us partakers of eternal life. Through Christ our Lord. There are a few announcements. Uh, first of all, thank you for coming, and uh, particularly we welcome uh, any guests who are here. Uh, if the secular Franciscans would raise your hands for just a moment. Okay, these are the folks to talk to. <laughs> One in the back. Uh, these are the folks to talk to if you have any questions about what in the world a secular Franciscan might be. We also have one of our postulants here, uh, Joseph, if you'd raise your hand. If anyone, <laughs> if anyone wants to talk about how one becomes a friar or joins any religious order, or why it's so expensive and we keep sending letters as a province to folks asking them to donate, uh, he's the guy to ask at the moment. Uh, Lent begins on Wednesday. Uh, please take a bulletin, okay? Uh, please take a bulletin. It has the schedule for Ash Wednesday. It's also on the website. Okay? Bulletin, website, not telephone at four in the morning. Okay? Uh, every, every parish in the country gets a, a certain number of phone calls at inopportune times before these days. Okay? So, bulletin, website, if necessary, call. Finally, uh, there is um, the Synod on Synodality uh, is meeting in Rome next year. Uh, this is a synod of bishops and some others uh, designed to try to discuss the ways in which, for better, lack of a better word, collegiality of decision making, collegiality of exchanging views may be uh, better practiced within the church. As part of that, the Pope has asked every diocese and archdiocese to conduct listening sessions about where the people of God believe in faith the Lord is calling the church in spreading the gospel and living the gospel life. Here at St. John's, we have uh, several things going on. There is a link to a survey in the bulletin and on the website that will be open starting Ash Wednesday. It is a survey that will ask people to respond to questions about their practice of the faith. Secondly, here at St. John's, we're having two listening sessions. They're going to be held here on March 20th and March 27th. The March 20th will be after the 1230 Mass, the March 27th will be after this Mass, the 1030 Mass, and uh, there will be, in future weeks, sign-up sheets in the back of the church asking uh, if you are coming. And finally, there are 14 diocesan listening sessions that are open. Uh, some of them are online, some of them are in person, uh, and they are uh, described, again, in the bulletin and on the website. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go proclaim the gospel by your lives. Our closing hymn is number 169, Alleluia, Alleluia. 169.